Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back to Celebrating Act 2. Uh, my partner Art Kirsch and I are with the beautiful, fabulous, and really intelligent Dr. Liz Lister. <laughs> Always great advice from you, Dr. Liz. Thank you. How are you? Hi. Good. We're doing well today. As we say behind your back all the time, she's really smart. She's a, a, a smart doctor. Um, she's a smarty. Yeah. So um, uh, in the past, we've talked about lots of different things, uh, uh, and particularly uh, uh, when we read uh, uh, materials uh, on the Internet and see on TV. Everybody talks about heart disease in men. But uh, lately, there's been a lot more information uh, being developed that heart disease is not just a guy's disease. And a lot of women first find out about uh, heart disease when they drop dead from a stroke because they're not paying attention to, uh, it was assumed that heart disease was not a big deal for women as much as it is for men. Can you uh, help uh, clarify what the thinking on this is? Or actually forget about thinking the facts on uh, heart disease in women. Yeah, absolutely. It's such an important topic. It's very interesting. We can talk in a moment about why people don't realize this, but heart disease is the number one killer of women in the United States and also in the world. Wow. Yeah, it really is a wow. A women are not so aware of that. Uh, actually, uh, in the last year that I could find numbers for in 2017, all there were about 300,000 women died of heart disease related mm. causes. That, and that does not include stroke, by the way, since we were mentioning that. Just coronary artery disease, blockage of the heart arteries, okay, other types of heart conditions. All right, so 300,000 deaths among women from heart disease and only 43,000 from breast cancer. Hmm. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Wow, and breast yeah. cancer gets all the attention. Yeah. And not that it shouldn't, by the way, but, exactly. but heart disease. I oh. learned a word for that. I, I learned a word, I actually had to look it up. Heuristic, H-E-U-R-I-S-T-I-C. And it's a... Okay. Uh, that's an interesting, it should be word of the day at one of my club meetings. But in any case, uh, it has to do with what we hear about in the news and in the media and among celebrities. Okay. Yes, of course. Yeah. So it's the, the availability heuristic. How often do we, how common do we think something is? Okay. So yes. when a, a famous female actor gets, uh, anything with her breasts, whether it's Angelina Jolie and the breast cancer gene diagnosis, or maybe a stage zero, in other words, a non-invasive pre-cancer of the breast that uh, an another actress got, those get a lot of attention, and they, which is okay, but women with heart disease do not get that same kind of attention, even if they talk about it. It just doesn't. Yeah. As, well, uh, I, I think part of this has to do uh, with uh, the fact that up until recently, most legislatures have been male dominated and whenever uh, and medical schools and all the rest of it. So uh, what do you do? You take care of your own and uh, uh, heart disease is something that, you know, the, well, the man went out and worked and he had the stress and he had heart disease. And so all the research goes into that. Uh, the same way that because it's more visible, uh, the research for women goes into uh, breast cancer. So as a, as a woman, uh, what would you suggest, because this is, uh, they, they see their doctor, what should they be on the lookout for, uh, how to find out if they're at risk, and the kind of things they can do to uh, keep themselves from uh, either minimizing uh, heart disease or at least uh, being able to attack it, much like men have been doing for uh, decades. Yes, absolutely. So first of all, women, heart disease in women can present a little bit differently than it does in men. 
a lot of people have heard of the classic symptoms of pain in the shoulder going down the left arm. That's pretty classic and typical, but it happens less often in women. For women, it can be more diffuse. They can feel heartburn, indigestion, as well as the usual ones of the chest pain and the pain down the left arm. So women need to take their health seriously, which they usually do. But again, they don't usually think about heart disease. So it's important to get the baseline testing, right? It's very important not to smoke. It's the number one modifiable risk factor for heart disease. Of course, this is for men as well as for women. A uh, little side comment, we'll come right back to this important question, is that uh, lung cancer kills more women than breast cancer. Okay, and so again, we, we just don't think about it this way, which of course, again, back to not smoking. And uh, let's just see, let me look at my list. I don't wanna miss any of these important ones. So for example, for women, I, like I mentioned, indigestion, uh, shortness of breath, uh, feeling nauseous, or also feeling extreme fatigue. This is very important for a woman to make sure that heart disease is ruled out. So her primary doctor, primary care doctor, should be able to check her out, all right, and just make sure that she's got a healthy heart. You know, so uh, if uh, she's going to her primary physician, and let's say she's in her 20s, uh, let's say she's a, a young mom of a couple of kids, so she's going to be exhausted, especially if she works. Uh, that's going to happen anyway. Uh, but you had mentioned something about baseline uh, you should get a baseline. Is there a series of tests that you could say to your doctor, you know, uh, how about can you either run this these chemical blood work or uh, maybe a stress test or something, something that would be reasonable so that, and probably in most cases covered, so that you could get this baseline so that when you go back a year or two later, you can refer to that baseline. What are the kind of tests that women should uh, ask for, begin to insist on. Okay, so the the most basic is the EKG. Most regular doctor's offices at this point can run an EKG. However, if she's having more symptoms, even if they're atypical symptoms, you know, the worst thing is to be told, to your point of the young woman with the little kids, of course, it's not as common in younger women. Heart disease is not as common in younger women, but women often know they know if their symptoms, you know, they know a certain level of fatigue due to the family and children and work and everything that they're doing versus something that's different. And I want women to advocate for themselves and pursue, like you said, ask for uh, getting more testing, not just the baseline testing. So as you, you mentioned, a stress test, there's a lot more evaluation that can be done beyond that. And uh, so that's a little bit more specialized, but for sure, you know, I don't know if it needs to be done as a screening test, but a baseline, again, depending on family history, a lot of factors are gonna influence at what age a doctor should do a baseline EKG. I would say no later than age 50. Hmm. So the it sounds to me like the age at which um, women have heart attacks, predominantly, you know, the statistics, uh, is not that different than men. It's, uh, you start uh, late 40s, early 50s, um, and uh, probably peaks around 55 or 60, uh, little, and from there up. A little later for women, it peaks a little bit later. Women have the protective benefit of estrogen, hmm. usually oh, okay. into their 50s. Okay. Yeah. so. It's the, the curves are a little bit different, right? Like, as you said, for men, 40s, 50s, those are sort of the years of peak stressors as well right. in terms of career and life. Uh, but for women, we've got that protective estrogen and it can be safely replenished later on. There's, there was a large study that we've talked about that shed some, it, it initiated some controversy about estrogen and cardiovascular health. But the science, when you look at it closely, shows that estrogen definitely is beneficial to blood vessels and to heart health and cardiovascular health overall. 
So the peak age of having problems with terms of heart disease uh, is a little bit later than it is for men. All this good information uh, for our women viewers. Right. Don't, and if you feel something, you know, like if you feel something, say something. And tell your doctor, you know what, you've got that machine over there. Uh, it, first of all, EKG is probably the easiest, simplest, least invasive thing other than a, a, a sonogram or something like that. I have a, one, of the, one of those things that they, they find out whether or not your, your knee is problematic or you have a leak someplace inside your body. So, uh, yeah, go see it because you're important to us. Uh, we get them all the time. It's sort of like routine. Uh, as John says, uh, in the late 40s, early 50s, uh, get it done. You deserve it. Make it happen. Dr. Liz, thank you so much. Again, great, great, useful and important information. Thanks for having me. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends, Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.